Okay, welcome to this special edition of Art and About with Danny Halbert on BronxNet. Today we are in the garden in front of the uh, Friedman House on the Grand Concourse, 166th Street, to celebrate the Skate the Bronx closing event. Um, the Andrew Friedman Home has something called the Andrew Friedman Initiative, and it is a synthesis of art and science. But more importantly, the foundation of it is really, it's a platform that allows people to take their skill set and apply it in different and innovative ways. The skate park is a brilliant example of that. Example. Um, the artists designed it, um, a construction crew, a real estate con construction crew built it, but both of them had an exchange of ideas and skills that really allowed it to blossom into what we have. And this is just the, the prototype, it's the beta of it because it's not complete. So with all of this uh, wildness going on around, I will attempt to, uh, to capture the scene and introduce some new drawing techniques. I've chosen a view that looks across the uh, skating area to the backdrop of the beautiful facade of the Friedman House, which gives us a, a, a light against which the pattern of the, the darker uh, trees and foreground uh, items will show up better. So we, we, one thing we want to consider when we are uh, drawing is uh, all of the elements that lend themselves to the creation of space. This includes large foreground shapes, such as these uh, skateboard ramps, which I'm going to block out here in the foreground. Uh, it gives you a little bit of the, of the surface of the, plat the skateboarding platform here. Uh, and then we have the middle ground, which includes uh, the trees, which give us the vertical uh, balance. Remember, we're always thinking in terms of the balance of opposites. So if you have strong horizontals going across the foreground, uh, we want to balance that with some strong verticals of these the tree elements. So we've gotten the basic shapes of the foreground. Um, and we know full well all through this process that eventually I'm also going to include what I'm going to call the more kinetic uh, aspect of this scene, which is the skateboarders themselves, which are really the subject of this drawing. So I'm just kind of blocking out the, the trappings, the setting of this scene. Uh, so I've worked my way across to the uh, beginnings of the building itself. Here I have the, the hedge. I, I'm going to quickly uh, kind of sketch in this guy who's, who's sitting on the, uh, on the uh, uh, stairs because I know he's probably going to move. I want to show where he is and where he is in relation to these big uh, urn-like uh, features. Uh, and this is the part of the drawing process I will refer to as the compositional outline. This is the, the trappings of your drawing, the, the foundation of your drawing. Again, you know, I'm looking for the specific shapes that, that uh, are the most interesting and unique. And as always, with this kind of a process, what you are wanting to do is not replicate the world that you see. You're just using the elements to serve your drawing needs. So we're, we're taking lots of liberties, bringing in things from other locations, uh, leaving out things that aren't necessary. You're making a lot of aesthetic choices. You're taking a lot of uh, what they call artist's liberty. And as I sketch out these shapes, 
uh, I'm, I'm seeing what's working. I'm making these decisions. So now I'm just going to sort of loosely block out some of the shapes of the, the leaves of the trees. And in order to better see what I've done here, which looks like a big mess, I'm going to take a, a piece of charcoal and block out the key shapes so that everyone can see what, I, what I've been doing. So I'm going to start with the most obvious, the tree. and the platform. And again, I could use my rag to change things. And every time I, I make a, what I call a pass, when I go back to examine the shapes again, I, I can modify what I have and make it, uh, you know, work it just a little bit differently. And so uh, already I have some, some key shapes set. So the next step is when I'm going to block in my colors. light shapes and with pastel you can use the side of the pastel to, to fill in a large area so now I'm going to block I'm going to choose a color a basic color it doesn't have to be perfect but give me a the right uh, sense for the for the surface of the that the uh, skateboarders are skating on. And in a way, you could think of this part of the process as, as creating a mosaic. First, you're drawing the outline of the shape. Then you are blocking in the colors and creating um, a pattern, a relationship of, of colors. Now, in between the platform are, is the ground, the earth, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna block that in. And one, one thing you wanna keep in mind in creating the illusion of three-dimensionality is overlapping. So when you have one object right in front of another, uh, like the, you don't see the rest of this part of the uh, course you, because it's overlapped with this one. So this helps the viewer to see that this is in front. It makes it simpler to look at. This is behind it, this is behind that, this is behind that. So always look for opportunities to overlap one shape in front of another. And with pastel, blending is key to everything. And the best tool to use for blending is your finger. You don't have to go looking for it. No fear of losing it. It's always right there. And it, you can have the kind of control that you want according to how much pressure you exert. So I see that there's a wonderful orange pattern on this. I don't know exactly what it means. That's on the surface of this uh, skating platform. So I'm going to I'm going to incorporate that into my design because it gives me another another color and a shape to work with. So I'm going to loosely uh, copy this uh, and just block in an orange
like so. And I can reinforce my shapes again with accents and highlights. The accents are the dark marks that help strengthen the, uh, the sense of the structure of your drawing. And the highlights are the light, the light bits that make things stand out. So this edge here would be a highlight. And this bit here, this is another highlight. So when you're doing trees, uh, it's important to realize that the, the leaves are not a, a solid uh, component. They're just uh, you, you treat them a little bit different. You, you can kind of sketch them in to, to just uh, loosely uh, follow the, the shape and the feeling of the leaves. So I'm going to block out the, some of these other shapes, these urns. The, uh, this is really becoming the focus of my picture. And whether the, I did this consciously or unconsciously, uh, I, I created a, a pattern of things that are all leading you to this central area of the drawing. So the expansion is here, these big shapes, and they're leading you to the, the uh, density or the compression of smaller shapes that are here in the center of the picture that will include uh, the figures of people who were here now right now there's there's nobody there but here's Thomas so I'll put him I'll sketch him right uh, right into this part while he's there take advantage he's got here's his pants and he's taking a picture so his arms are out like this so I know that I'm not gonna come up with every <coughs> every detail but I, I put enough information so that I can come back to it later and know where he's located in relation to these other uh, elements. And now I'll just block out a kind of dark shapes for the windows and leave some of the, leaf, the leaves showing in front of them. And I'll leave some space between this window and the tree so I could have light against dark, always keeping in mind the pattern of lights and darks. And knowing that these are all lined up, I want to make sure that, uh, that they get a little bit smaller as they get further away, that there's an imaginary line that uh, leads you through these, these various shapes. I'm just going to pop in some highlights of the top of the um, balustrade or whatever you want to call it, just so um, I can see where that ends and where the, uh, where the building begins. And now I have to choose a color for the building itself, approximate. So I'm just going to do an, uh, it's like an off-white, that's what the building looks like to me. Lock in over the whole business of the building, wherever I can see it peeking through behind the trees. I can't block in every detail at first, but once I have the darker color, I can maybe block in a pattern. If I need to um, to find some of the details more, I'll use my charcoal pencil. Uh, you don't want to use uh, regular graphite pencils or ebony pencils or anything like that uh, that doesn't really work with pastels. And the way that you um, have to work with a charcoal pencil because the lead is, the charcoal itself is very brittle, so you have to shave off the wood part 
and uh, make a point. And then uh, I can now uh, flesh out my my shapes. If you know, if I want to uh, do a little bit of detail work, just to indicate to myself uh, what what kind of uh, look I'm going to go for later. So um, I think I'm going to use my charcoal to start to uh, see where. <coughs> You know where I can uh, incorporate them into the scene and again you know I know that I'm not going to uh, to get every detail even though I'm scribbling away <clears throat> and uh, jumping around a bit nevertheless I have begun to create uh, you know the basic trappings of this Piece. And now I can, you know, step back for a second and, uh, you know, assess, try to come up for air and assess what I have, um, you know, what have I created, how, how is it working, it, do I feel a sense of the balance, are my angles right, you know, you want to stop periodically and, uh, and look at what you have. Um, you know, squint. One one good uh, way of seeing the big picture and not the detail is to squint your eyes and just see the shapes of things. <coughs> so I see this sort of graffiti-like pattern that's on this uh, this uh, curved uh, skateboard. Uh, shape and I'm going to block out some of the, I'm going to take advantage of some of these uh, co brighter colors to, uh, you know, give us a greater sense of uh, the artist's contribution to this setting. Gives us more color to work with, um, you know, sort of a, like I say, a sort of graffiti-like shapes. Uh, so let me see if I, uh, let's maybe I'll use, instead of the brown, I'm going to use the red um, in here to give us a different, different color to work with. Let's see if, if that intensity can work with this with this kind of a scene. So you want to take advantage of all of the special possibilities that a given scene presents. So again, in this case, you know, this was a surface that was painted and who's to say how bright or how intense uh, it, you, it can be. So let's push the color. Let's let's give it a full impact, and we could always tone it back down again. So now I'm gonna just work on some things that I have uh, ignored. The, uh, the sculpture here by uh, Melissa Calderon, uh, which adds a wonderful kind of uh, sense of artistic uh, structure to our environment. I, I made a mistake, I can't go back and fix it. You can always fix it. You can always fix it. And that gives you the freedom to explore, to experiment, and never to, to fear uh, that you've made you know, a wrong move. It, you, you can always change it. Now I see... Uh, Ojua Newton uh, setting up a, an umbrella here, and I, I, I see that that gives me another element to work with, so uh, I'm happy about that. I, I don't see it as an intrusion, I see it as a, an opportunity, and I'm going to block in the umbrella to give me something else to work with. Uh, it gives me a, a strong shape of dark and light.
And again, you, we're working in the most forgiving material. I just brace my easel, my board, and then I can take my eraser and, and uh, pull out the shape of the inside of that, of that uh, umbrella. Take my charcoal pencil and draw the interesting shape of the umbrella. As fast as I am in capturing movement and people, there's some things that even elude me. And one of those is these uh, skateboarders flying through the air. So um, that you know, brings us to another technique that I used in this previous uh, piece I did right here uh, earlier this summer when I created this backdrop uh, and, and all of the, uh, the composition for this pastel. Uh, and at the time, uh, Xavier Figueroa was here taking pictures of, uh, of the skateboarders. And I asked him, if you get some, a, a good one of, of somebody flying through the air, uh, email it to me. And um, he did that. I'm very happy that uh, I was able to use this uh, photograph and incorporate it into my drawing. Uh, so what I did was I um, blew it up. I, I, I uh, plugged it into Photoshop and was able to print it at the size, the exact size that I needed for my picture. And then I, with my scissors, cut out the uh, entire figure and the skateboard. And then I took a, a piece of tape and taped it onto the, I looked, I looked for different locations where would be interesting for, for the guy to be uh, set up. And I thought right here in the middle, it, this was all drawn with pastel. So how do you, how do you plot in uh, a, a new figure on top of a pastel that's already created? Well, I put, I pasted this right on here, as you can see with a piece of tape rolled up in the back. And then I took a, a fine pencil and I outlined the border, the outline. And then everything that was on the inside of the outline, I erased down to the paper. So then, then I took off the figure and I had an outline and an erased, just a blank uh, paper showing through on the inside. And by having the, the filled in photograph next to it, I just copied all the information right into the space that I had created. And that's the technique of using, of incorporating photographic uh, imagery, uh, detailed uh, aspect into a, uh, a, an already existing uh, drawing. So we're gonna attempt to do the same thing today uh, we're going to come over here and uh, my friend Ojua Newton has uh, been photographing the, some of the skateboarders flying through the air um, and we took his uh, di digital image and plugged it into the uh, laptop that we just uh, happened to miraculously have on hand where Michael Nobby is uh, studiously cropping the photograph to just get me the, uh, the, the f image of the, the, the dude flying through the air. And once we're able to capture that, he's gonna print it out for me. Um, and hopefully we'll get it the size that will work uh, to, to do exactly what I've been saying and incorporate it into the piece that I've been working on today.
been another episode of Art and About with Danny Halbin on BronxNet. And I hope it's been an inspiration for you to draw your own world in the Bronx and beyond. Till next time. about shoulders. Your shoulders is a three-tier muscle. You have your front delt, you have your rear delt, and you have your mid delt. So when you're working out your shoulders properly, you have to do three different exercises. It's wonderful being able to compete with a lot of these young guys from all over the world. It's important to stay in shape. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor and make a difference in the life of a child for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org.